What's up guys and welcome back or to the channel. Yes, first of all, this probably looks super weird. One, we're first starting a video at night. Second of all, power strokes in the garage. Third of all, so zoomed in. I keep looking at the screen, I apologize, and I'm just like, oh my, it looks so weird. Like I said, I set my new camera in to get fixed. This is like a double old camera. This is probably one of the second ones I bought for the channel. Long time ago. So breaking it out of retirement for today's video. My old camera should be back. We should have everything smooth, but I don't know if I'm gonna get down with this when I'm editing. I'm looking at it right now. I may, I may not. So as you guys know or you don't know, a while ago my amp and my Hellcat blew, my 210s, my two JL 10W3s, uh, best sounding subs I've ever ever owned. I, I can vouch for that. But for my garage, I've got a Rockville Twin 15 tower speaker, 10 inch sub down there. It sounds absolutely amazing. It truthfully sounds so, so good. So what I honestly did, went out and bought like, a, I think it's like some ridiculous, like, like a 4,000 watt or something for my Hellcat. It's in a video a while back. The thing's great. My subs never go into protection mode anymore. And it, it just, it makes them thump y'all. And it's an absolute, Beast. Well, here you have it. I'll get. We'll probably get more into this and finishing this install in the kind of daylight tomorrow. But we're gonna do a lot of stuff today. Maybe some prep get us set up for this. These we'll get to in a second. Oh, also while we're at it, I had this set up for you guys. Look at these rock lights at at night. This is just two in one wheel well, and obviously the cords just plugged in my Milwaukee battery. So. Uh, we gotta finish the fronts, but the other rears aren't lit up because just the one wire's connected. But two lights is absolutely bright, y'all, at night. Look at that, that is so bright. I know, you know, this is like six inches of lift in the rear, so um, just might be a perfect setup for you guys if you don't wanna run all three. It's still a lot of light. Now this, well, let me tell you a quick story how I ended up with this. I was actually looking up speakers, and yeah, I was talking like speakers bigger than garage one I have over there. And on Rockville's website, um, I came across everything you just saw. Now don't get me wrong, the typical subs, JL, Kicker, um, American Bass, all of those brands, that's the usual setup. And with that setup, you're gonna have your amp, you're gonna have your sub box, you're gonna have your subs, um, whole collection of items just to get your sound. If you're running off your stock radio, line output converter. If you're running off an aftermarket radio, well first, aftermarket radio, then RCAs. So there's a lot of factors in that kind of audio system. Well, now you're probably asking how I ended up with a vented tube subwoofer. Mind you, I haven't even got to the second half of the audio system that's just ridiculous that your boy sent it way too hard on. Oh my goodness. Now this mother trucker looks like a trash can. Now if you could see it, you're like, what is going on here? Well, let me show you. Boom, baby, look at that. The amp is built in. Here is our port and vent. Um, this is an absolutely amazing, amazing idea and setup. Not only that, we completely remove the line output converter with a high level input. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your rear speakers and plug them in right here. So this giant thing is an all-in-one. However, your boy, full sends only on this Tahoe. 12 inch sub, and I only have 10 inches of space in the back to deal with. So, from where the trunk closes to the seat, plenty of room. However, excuse all the painting supplies still, these handles and the length of that sub don't add up. So I'm hoping that the curve of it allows us to place it back here. You didn't even say anything. Oh wow. So, is it really starting to rain? Again. Anyway, so we're gonna see if this fits back there. However, first, we're ordering Chinese food. Some nights when we're doing stuff like this, we just literally order DoorDash, Uber Eats, whatever. It's so convenient, it really is. So enough with this giant trash can here. There was two options for this next part right here. Box is already open, but I wanted to be different. I wanted to do something fun. I've already tested one of these. It's starting to rain. I'm gonna pull this inside, but we don't need to because this, or these, are wet sounds. Yes, this is marine speakers. You guys have seen all those videos, or if you went to Daytona or you've been at SEMA, you see the trucks with these giant speakers and you can hear them from a mile away. Well, what better 
to put speakers like that on than our Tahoe. This thing's gonna be the ultimate tailgating machine. Um, even though it's got no tailgate, any concert, any event, any, you know, school, whatever you need to pull up and play some music. If you're just at your buddy's house, this thing will be able to do more than that. We don't care. Let's get them wet because here are, well, first things first, these things came out way larger than I thought. 300 watt two-way wakeboard tower speaker. Um, I messed up. Rockville had two options. They had an eight inch and they had a six inch. And I'm thinking eight inches is not that big. Um, eight inches is that big. Gonna get a repeat of the Ram in here. Ugh. All right. Then I'm just gonna disconnect this and I'll tuck this in here for tonight. I fully wasn't expecting the rain. Uh, that's for sure. All right, guys, and just like that, it's the next day here. Um, we're coming out here right now, and we're going to start wiring our trash can sub here, <laughs> our 12-inch tube subwoofer. Now, uh, I'm trying to figure out mounting solutions for our tower speakers here, which kind of need to mount. Yes, trust me, the trunk closes. I, I've tried it. But we got to wire our tower speakers in here somehow, and I'm just going to probably run one, two, three, and then the fourth one will sit right here. So we'll have four across the back of here, which will be absolutely obnoxious, but awesome. Is these are just standard speaker imports. They're powered um, by the speaker wires. You don't need an amp or nothing. If you had an amp, it'd probably sound way different, probably a lot better. But you can run these off of standard speaker wires. The problem is, is if I just hook up the speaker wires to this, I tested these already. These are dumb loud. I mean, really loud and just super awesome. So when you pop that back glass, you're going to want that sound to come way out, be heard way on the other side of these woods. But you don't want to be driving with those speakers blaring right against the back glass. So I needed to figure out a way this morning to take this and put a switch on it. And apparently you can't just put a switch on speaker wire because the sound quality goes way down and sounds awful, so we can't be doing that. What I think I'm gonna have to do, which I will get on order, uh, I'll still show you guys these today though, I'll hook up a wire for you guys so you can hear it. But what we're gonna have to do is take these, take the speaker wire, convert it to RCA. And after we convert it to RCA, they make something awesome that we will run up here and probably tuck it here, 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 maybe make our way into the glove or center console here. But it's an RCA volume control, and what we're gonna do with that is be able to take that speaker wire, convert it to RCA, and after we convert it to RCA, we'll be able to plug it into the volume control on the outward side of that RCA volume control. It'll run all the way back to our tower speakers. So from the front, in the driver's seat, we'll be able to turn the volume up and down for our tower speakers, and we should be good. I don't really, really want to drill into this plastic and mount it here, because it's probably not that sturdy. These are decently heavy. They're not that heavy, but there's some weight to them. It'll probably make that plastic flex over time. So what I'm honestly going to do here, if you can see, there's a perfect mounting spot right here. We'll figure something out at Home Depot, get our bracket, mount it here. Yeah, get our hole saw, drill it here, come up here, mount over and down sub fits in between both uppers and we have a full sound system in the truck guys we legit never catch a break here this makes no sense it's just like sleep i mean i wouldn't say it. it's like really soft wow that's actually wait never mind that's actually kind of hard <laughs> but out of nowhere look the sky's blue are you kidding me in the middle of this install every time it's got to be a curse or something every time i go outside Right now in the fall, it just doesn't want to cooperate. I all I did was start touching the power wire, and look at this. Yeah, must must be a sign to get a shop. We're working on that. All right, well we're finally back to some sunshine. A couple minutes later, we got to find ourselves a remote wire. Meaning this wire, when 12 volts gets sent to it, it's gonna act as a relay in the amp. So pretty much, it just needs 12 volts, and it'll kick um, kind of the relay in the amp, and it'll send 12 volts from the battery to the amp. So gauge of this wire you're gonna tap into doesn't exactly matter because you just need the voltage uh, to pretty much tell the amp, hey, send it from the battery. Uh, this wire has no draw or anything. It's just pretty much telling the amp, hey, kick on. And when it's not there, it's off. So don't worry about the gauge. Pretty much, I got a power probe here. You can use multimeter or whatever. But this yellow wire in here, as you can see, 
it says 0.41. You could do it like this or you could start it. And you come back here and you're gonna touch the same yellow wire. Boom, look at that, 14 and a half volts running. So what you're gonna do is pretty much tap into that, run it all the way back and put it in the remote wire on your amp. We ran this already from the battery up, down, back here, and out through here. It's not even attached to the battery yet. I just kind of fished it uh, while I was running out away from that rain. But um, So we got this here. We're gonna connect our ground here. Now, remind you, this isn't a huge, like, super-powered sound system. That's why the power wire is so small. Um, it comes exactly with the sub, so it's rated for that sub. But like in my car, I got the zero gauge running to the amp that powers two tens. Yeah, I did all that. So now you guys know why I never reconnected my handle. Because I need to come in here, check our speaker wires, because the amp has a line output converter built in. Now, if you guys decide to do this yourself as well, it's for you to decide whether you wanna run both of your rear speakers to your line output converter or not. I personally have never done it. I, I, I have just, even in my car, my Jeep, um, what else? My old Ram, I actually ran it to both and I had issues with it because longer story than that. But even in our Hellcat, I've only picked one side of the speakers to connect to. Pretty much a line output converter converts the highs to the lows. And that's what you need here to get your subs to run off of your factory head unit. So while I'm in here, I'm actually gonna tighten our handle down because, <laughs> oops, forgot to tighten the rear bolt. I'm gonna find our speaker wire colors and then then we'll tap in positive and negative with some extra speaker wire, run it back, and then honestly, we're ready to throw our sub in. So, as you saw, all I did was take a picture of this. Uh, we got our grayish blue and darkish navy or blue wire in here. So those are your speaker wire colors. Now you don't want to tap in behind the door because you got to fish through here. The same color wires are located behind this plastic panel. Just things to look out for. found an easier way to install these while I was doing that last one there and also while we're dealing with this rainstorm. You need to drill three holes. Uh, they're all the same size. So this this wire, the top and bottom mounting hole are all a quarter inch drill bit. As you can see, look at this. Goes right through, no problem. Then all you really have to do is take your wires, stick them in. But now it lays flat and all you have to do, whoop, Make sure it stays lined up. If you want to stick the bolt in, you can. In a second. In. And then it's just like perfect execution. Um, otherwise, I was trying to drill it with like the rubber mount if you were gonna mount it to like a roll bar or something. But um, literally drill one hole and then fill in the other two. That makes your life so much easier. All right, guys, well, as you can see, this website, I just Googled it. Right rear uh, speaker, positive and negative, dark blue and light blue, like we found in the speaker. But this one tells you exactly which one's positive and negative. All I did was Google it, came up with this whole thing, uh, all the color codes, how to get the tweeters out, the radio out, I don't know. Awesome website, uh, but there we have it. And let's try this. Third time's the charm. Yes, it is cold. The sun is coming out again, finally. Let's hope the rain holds off for us to finish this. Um, right behind your seatbelt actuator thing here, whatever, uh, is this plug. It's down and in here. But we peel back our loom and here are our colors and twist both of the positives together and both of the negatives together and run that to the positive and negative of that speaker wire. Yeah, yeah. Damn it, it's 
I'm in real big, yeah, yeah. So guys, I just kind of hooked it in there for you guys just to kind of hear it a little bit. It is tapped into the rear speaker right now. When I do it, I'm obviously going to convert the fronts, I think, to RCAs. So I'm going to convert the front to an RCA, put a little um, volume control up by the driver, and run a wire all the way back to this. And then uh, we can control the volume from the front. But these will get super loud, I think, once we connect it to the uh, front speakers. That's for sure. guys our sub is pretty much installed here everything is run and connected a remote power ground and then our rear speaker wires uh, just heat shrunk them together I need to get more zip ties I'm fresh out so I'll get this all neat and tidy zip tie together um, do that it'll look all pretty in here the only thing we have left is to hook up that battery and let it rock all right guys so I found that the high output converter thing on the amp um, there's there's some kind of issue with it want, I think it this one if you're using the highs um, it wants both sides but like the high line output converter I have in my car doesn't really care for both sides so I think I'm gonna order another pack SNI 35 and I'm just gonna stick it back there and run the RCAs to it honestly I think that's the easiest thing to do but this thing does sound pretty good but when both like speaker wires were put in um, it just didn't like just didn't like it so I think I'm gonna get the line output converter when just one half plugged in this thing actually does slap pretty hard <laughs> Wow, that's the that beat right there. Oh, it's the champagne corn. Big joy. People coming. All right, guys, well, there you have it. Here is your Rockville. 12 inch tube subwoofer installed. Honestly, it sounds pretty darn good for just being plain Jane. I'm gonna be honest, this, the four tower speakers, was less than like $400, which is super cool, um, considering you could do something like that for that cheap. Like I said, I think I'm gonna get a line output converter and convert those rear speakers to RCA and actually just plug it into the RCA ports right here. I think it'll allow us to get it a little bit louder and just, just cleaner too but i think i'm gonna venture on to home depot not today um possibly in the next video or so and we will get this audio all figured out and we'll get these marine speakers all figured out for the back of our tahoe um it's gonna scream um this sub here guys it's it's very clean simple and you know just basic not a huge crazy system um the tens in my hellcat um, they're JL10W3s, like I said, but they hit very low notes, and that's what I love about them. And that's kind of the problem I find with a lot of a lot of subs, even 12s. Everybody, uh, most of my friends will run single 12s or dual 12s, and I just feel like the 12s can't hit that low of notes. But my JL10W3s hit like the whole spectrum, and they sound so so good. This single 12, not bad at all, especially the fact that it's all here amp sub vented box amp sub ported box it's all there um so that's a sweet kind of just little setup there cannot complain for the price all right guys well stay tuned to the next couple videos we're gonna get this sound system really really bumping i know i said i had an announcement for you guys in this video but due to certain things that announcement is pushed back um you guys will hear it very very soon Get excited it's gonna be absolutely nuts I can tell you that so stay tuned for that hope you guys enjoyed this video it's honestly getting way too late tonight for me to even finish the rock lights with the weather and everything it's just crazy uh, nowadays would have loved to get the rock lights in show you guys the push button show you guys how to wire them do all that we're dealing with Ohio weather now which is more of a reason for me to get into a shop sooner um, 
We're working on that. Stay tuned, bear with us. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, shoot a thumbs up. If you haven't been here before, please go and click subscribe, take care, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one.